And that is brand new music, outstanding release from Brown Mark, featuring his band Cryptic. The new CD is entitled It's Been a While, and you all know Brown Mark, great, great singer, songwriter, and producer, great musician. Uh, first came into our, our scene as the bassist in the Grammy Award winning Prince and the Revolution from the movie Purple Rain. He, he's been playing for Prince for a while and then moved on to his own solo career, recorded with Motown and has been giving us some great R&B and funk through these years. He has a new independent release. It's been a while and we welcome now to the upper room with Joe Kelly, Brown Mark. How you doing, Mark? Pretty good. How you doing? I'm doing great mm -hmm. and thanks for uh, the outstanding release. Cryptic, it's been a while. A pleasure. So you've uh, been, I guess the title says it's been a while, been a while be, be, uh, between official releases. Um, these, these songs that you are getting ready to release, how, how far have they been apart? Um, have you been working on them for a while? Not really. I, I basically, um, when I started, this, well, when, actually when I decided to uh, re-enter the music industry, I um, started from scratch, but it was on a whole different type of, whole different style of music. I was uh, coming in more, more urban, more hip hop, um, but I decided to change my course about a year and a half ago. So I went back to the drawing board, and this is what I came up with. Pretty satisfied with it. Very happy. So when you go back to the drawing board, is it is it scrapping the whole project, the songs, or, or just yeah. retune? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, basically, it's it, you know it was an image, an image thing. It's. I, it, it wasn't who I am. I had a, put together a group, and it was pretty much leaning more towards the type of group that I had, which was real hip-hop, very urban type of a setting. And um, I just wanted something a little bit different. I wanted to uh, get more into the R&B, more into the uh, commercial arena. And your studio, you have a... A home studio, the skillet, right? Yeah. Yeah. How how's the recording now as opposed to such as the days in, in, in the early eighties in the Minneapolis scene? Um what do you, what do you like better about recording now and and how how did this record come about for you recording? Well it's, I had a choice. I could go into uh studio and work with the uh, traditional two inch analog or um put together my own little setup uh, with the new digital equipment that they have out now. It's pretty amazing how close you can get to analog. Um, so I decided that I would try it uh, on my own at home instead of going to a studio. Plus the, the expense, uh, the money you spend in a large facility nowadays could be pretty spendy. And so I figured I'd give it a try, and I was pretty impressed with uh, the quality that I got out of the digital, um, the, uh, digital studios, so I stuck with that. How about uh, as far as bass? What what kind of uh, instrument are you working with bass now? What, somebody actually emailed me and wanted to uh, know what kind of strings are you using. <laughs> what kind of strings? I like Ernie Ball. Okay, they they want to steal the secrets. <laughs> yeah. Well, basically, I I, I play an Olympic. But recently, I've been uh, leaning a lot towards Warwick. I've been playing a lot of Warwick basses, and I really like their sound. And so, kind of combining both of them into my style now. And uh, Warwick, they have their own strings. But on my Olympic, I just deal with the the Ernie Ball, real heavy gates. So I don't play with light strings. A lot of bass players like light and medium strings, but I stick with the real heavy strings because they give you a deeper, heavier sound. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you play four string primarily? Yeah, four and five. Okay. Yeah, I, I actually I like the five string better. Okay. And, and some folks that you worked on on the record with, I noticed uh, Jerry Hubbard, mm -hmm. which people know uh, for a little cup of coffee with the time, but he's been involved with the the Minneapolis music scene. Yeah. And uh, also Kip Blackshire mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Good musician. Yeah. Kip's an awesome singer. Oh, yeah, definitely. Is, is he based out of Minneapolis now? Is he yeah, set shop based, up there? Yeah. He's based out of here now. He's got a bright future in front of him. Mm-hmm. Definitely. 
and the CD is uh, it's been a while from Brown Mark featuring the band Cryptic and uh, you can go right now great website uh, Sam Nation put it together right yeah yeah and it's uh, crypticmusic.com and Brown Mark is, is a great musician and we're gonna give people a little taste of the record right now come back and talk more with Brown Mark let's see we'll go with uh, take a ride with me all right. and, and we see and we see the funk and the bass all over that from you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and how about Sensual? She's from Minneapolis as well. Yeah, that's that's actually Sensual. Sensual. Okay. Yeah, she's uh, it's Puerto Rican for Sensual. Okay. Or Spanish for Sensual. She's a Puerto Rican rapper that we uh, we're actually going to be doing a record on her pretty soon. So you'd be looking out for that kind of a different flavor. So it's going to be nice. And people can order it right now online, and it's over at uh, crypticmusic.com. How about the significance of cryptic? Uh, significance of cryptic. Uh, well, cryptic, even how the name came about, was just, I've always been kind of a quiet type. I, I never, never did many interviews. I didn't talk to too many people back in the day. And um, I, I got you on BET on one of those videos a long time ago, though. <laughs> you got <laughs> yeah, that one? Uh-huh. one of those rare moments. Right. You know, I, I just, I've always been a quiet type, and yeah, I keep to myself. And when I started working on this record, and there's a lot of meaning in my music. It means a lot to me. A lot of my stories are real, real-life experiences. Uh, everything that you hear, I've experienced. I've been through it. And I put that on paper. I put that in words. And um, there's other uh, deeper meanings in the music as well, and uh, albums to come down the road. I'll reveal a lot more of what I'm about inside internally. So that's where Cryptic came about, uh, kind of a secret, uh, encoded uh, message within the linings of the music. Okay, well said. That's Brown Mark, and Brown Mark has a great CD. It's been a while, and uh, glad to have him on the show, The Upper Room. And uh, we are going to uh, get into Take a Ride with me, and we'll come back and talk with Brown Mark. Sounds like having a great time in the studio. That is Brown Mark. That was fun recording that? Oh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, we had a good time. Take a Ride with me, and, uh, you know, Real musicianship, and, and you, you put a nice modern spin to it, right? Yeah, that 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 song there, that, that was one of the last ones I did. It actually, um, I was sitting sitting down, I was talking with a few friends, and we started talking about a uh, situation. I used to live down in Orlando, and uh, you know, we just we hit some bad blood down there. Uh, a partner of mine kind of double crossed me. I said, you know what? I'm gonna write a song about just haters, uh-huh. <laughs> people, people just who just try to hold other people back so they're envious and jealous. So that's kind of where that song came from. Yeah. So yeah, you recording. And uh, how about the musicians today that you work with? I mean, you you come from. Correct me if I'm wrong. The school of, you know, playing music and and a lot of it's done differently. Do you, do you find them, you know? Picking your brain for pointers, you see things turning around, going back to that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Um, music, music industry's changed so rapidly. Um, you have a lot of people, a lot of musicians now who grew up in a uh, an era of sequencers and you know digital uh, sequencing and sampling. Back in the day, I mean, we had to play the stuff. We had a fifteen piece band, but we had to pull it off. Right, right. And so you you, you learn differently. So even working with my new group, it, it's the work that the work ethic is a lot different. So it takes a little time and takes a little patience to get them used to the way um, I like things done because I'm a perfectionist and uh, my work ethic is very strong. It's like we're going to come here, we're going to do this, and we're going to be great at it. And most people, they take this uh, lack, lackadaisical approach that, hey, you know, it sounds good enough to me. 
then they go out there and that's how they present themselves. Right. Or, um, in the old school, it wasn't like that. So, so, so what's the uh, brown, brown mark fine system on the band practice? <laughs> Have you established that? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh-huh. Uh, back in the day, like when I had Maserati and groups like that, I was more, it was more of a dictation. You know, you, you come to rehearsal and everybody's afraid, you know. It's like Darth Vader walking in the door. <laughs> right, right. But I've learned that that doesn't work. It doesn't work. And people, you know, you have to respect people. And you, you respect them for their talent, for the art that they carry. And um, with the respect and, and giving people a chance to express themselves and tell me what they're feeling, and things like that, has really helped me to maintain a really good group of guys with nice personalities. So Brown Marks Band, uh, you're getting ready. Mm-hmm. To uh, do some shows in the area out there in Minneapolis. Definitely. Um, who, who's in the current band? Uh, right now we have uh, Tom Chase. He's a local uh, guitarist. Uh, used to have his own band here. They did a lot of rock and roll. Uh, so a lot of different music, totally different music than what he's doing now. Uh, my drummer, he's a phenomenal, phenomenal cat. His name is Ollie. And uh, just lots of pocket. I love playing bass with, you know, playing bass to his beats. Right, uh huh. Because he just got that pocket. And then uh, we have uh, Joe on, we call him Brazilian Joe, because <laughs> he's from Brazil. Okay. And he's on keyboards. And since while she's a rapper, and of course, we got Hub playing bass. We got a double bass setup. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then we have Yum Yum. And he's one of the backup singers. So it sounds like a solid band, and, and uh, you're going to be playing around town. Hopefully, branch out. Mm-hmm. The album's coming out August 27th, right? Yeah, August 27th. Yeah. And people can order it right now in advance? Yeah, definitely. You've got to check it out. Yeah, crypticmusic.com. There's samples all up on the website, great website. And uh, you can pick it up anywhere. And uh, also, if they don't have it in store, you can uh, let our independent. Uh, stores here let you know that you want it in stock. Yeah. So uh, going the independent route, how, how was the decision to, to go that way? I know it's got to be some risk, but, but definitely fulfilling, right? It's, it's a lot of risk, but it's fun. Uh-huh. Because back in the day, uh, you know, I've been on a few major labels, and you're just a number. And what happens is, you know, there's, there's such big companies, and they have so much money invested in these, little, these record companies. That what happens is um, they they throw a ton of money behind an artist to try to break them. I think now I've heard that it's even three million a single. So the enormous amounts of money go out to break these singles. So you can imagine what happens if right. you don't sell anything. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the money's not there next time. <laughs> you're a fly by night musician. Right, that's what happens. And so I decided to take it the independent route and. See See, just see what I can generate on my own and with my own knowledge of the industry. And uh, from that point on, you know, if, if we feel that uh, later on we're going to need some major help, then we'll go get it. Right now, we're doing fine. We're doing fine. Yeah. It, I mean, people are talking about the record and, and loving it, uh, what we heard. And I love it. Thanks thanks for the copy and thanks for the autograph picture. I got it on my wall of fame at the home <laughs> studio. <laughs> Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. So uh, let's see. You talked about Jerry Hubbard. You guys uh, co-wrote a song. Uh, actually, a few songs on here. Mm-hmm. But uh, we're going to listen right now to a, a song you did, a real nice ballad called It's Been a While, the title track, and and Kip Blackshire on, on the lead vocals, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, he's phenomenal. I said, hey, Kip, you can just go ahead and take the whole thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know. Is he going to do any shows with you? Uh, he might. Uh-huh. He might. He, it depends on his schedule because I know he's really working hard on his uh, demo and stuff right now. He's trying to come out with a record pretty soon. So, yeah. All right. We'll listen to it right now. This is Brown Mark with his band Cryptic from It's Been a While. Here's the title track. We'll come back with Brown Mark. And it's been a while, and he is back with a great album, Brown Mark. And uh, that is It's Been a While. And uh, we were talking about the, the Minneapolis music scene. Yeah. 
Yeah. So uh, how, how about uh, playing live there? How's the live music scene in Minneapolis? It, has it changed? It, it really hasn't. It, it hasn't changed much. There's a lot of bands out there, and uh, there's a lot of places to go see live music. And I, I enjoy that because, um, you know, I've lived in some other cities, and it's real hard to find live music. But here it's an abundance. Right. Yeah. How, how's, how's your chops playing live? You, oh, you practice all the time? Yeah. Yeah. You know, hey, it's like riding a bike. Oh, right, right. <laughs> yeah, you don't lose it. So. And, of, of course, uh, you put together a great, great band and um, the Minneapolis music scene. How about, there, there's a possibility, I know on your website you had playing an award show out in Minnesota, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're probably going to uh, videotape that and uh, air it live. On, okay website and uh, we're probably going to do that more often mm-hmm. um, I also have a uh, another site uh, called the Underground Radio oh okay yeah and um, what that is is a, a site for unsigned musicians and so we go there and we air videos and things like that for unsigned groups wow I gotta link that up from my own site to, yeah to it, that it, sounds interesting it's pretty nice it's still in its development stage but it is up and running but it's a nice site for un- unsigned musicians to go, and if they want to, you know, really, really get a good boost in this industry, I mean, yeah, a lot of people listen in, so, yeah. Now, way back when you were playing with Prince during the days like that, and I know in, in one interview he was stated as saying if they took the bass out of his music from Brown Mark, he, he wouldn't have bass anymore. <laughs> what, what, what do you think Prince loved in your bass playing and, and still does today? What, what particular st- part of the bass? I, I think I, I, I'm a very unorthodox bass player. I have my own style. I mean, you can't you can't compare it with someone else. Okay. Um, and I think I brought a lot of energy to the band because um, when I play, it's almost like this earthquake, a rumbling type of effect when I kick in and revolution was basically you know just that it was a revolution i mean we were changing what music was at that time period and so i just kind of fit right in there and uh, a lot of musicians they would come see us and they just you know they couldn't replicate that they could go back to their their local their local bands, and they, they try to get on stage in a nightclub, and they just couldn't replicate that. Uh, so we were like a freight train. And, right. And I, and I think that's what he liked about my playing. It was just very solid, very, very just aggressive. And how was it, you know, stepping on stage uh, a couple of years ago, I think, at the celebration, right? Yeah, it was yeah. nice. It was nice, yeah. yeah. It was nice. It was like uh Like riding a bike? Yeah, you know, it was like a family reunion, you know. Right. I hadn't been on stage in a while, but it all came back. Came back real easy. Right. <laughs> so uh, you, your new CD, It's Been a While, people can go right now. It's uh, official street release date, August 27th, but you can put the order in right now. And, of course, we've been featuring uh, various tracks off the CD already here on the Upper Room. And uh, you can go to crypticmusic.com for, for all the uh, ordering information from Brown Mark. There's a guest book on there. You, you, you check on it pretty often? Oh, I, I check the guest book every day. Okay. And I, I read all my emails, too. So, I mean, I, I, I welcome people to send me emails. I know a lot of artists don't answer their emails. But right. I, I, get, I get back with almost everyone that emails me. Okay. It takes me a lot of time, but... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it's important. And, and, you, and you notice that it, it's such important, the Internet mm. age, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Everyone, I try to, I try to be friends, you know, and try mm. to make new friends. Right. Like when, I, when I do a concert, it's a hall full of friends. That's what I like. And, and before we uh, get, get moving along in a, in a bit, we want to thank uh, Jackie Thompson, mm-hmm. who, who's been influential in, in the promotion of, of the the new release, it's been a while. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. My, um, uh, project coordinator, she's done, done an awesome job. Right. And don't want to forget uh, my boy, Tony Williams. 
<laughs> okay, that's right, your partner, right? Yeah, yeah. Partner. Can't, can't forget Tony Williams and uh, you guys. Really nice website, but the most important thing is the the music and you know you you got you got the the Mark Brown, true musicianship with uh, the current flavor on there. Yeah. How about uh, in your free time when you put the music down? What, what do you like to do? Wow, that's hard. <laughs> I, I basically I live and breathe music, so uh-huh. um, usually I mean when I do get a little break, I'll I'll do some. I like building. Okay. Yeah, I work I work well with my hands. I like building furniture and remodeling and things like that. Kind of kind of different, but that's just me. I love I love creating things. How about your family? Uh, any of them into music as well? Uh, no, I'm the only musician. Right. Yeah, it's kind of odd, you know. Usually uh, when there's a musician in a family that has any type of success, it's usually contributed to someone along the family line, but I don't have any any family members that play. So so, so you did it. And how, where, where did uh, you get into the music originally back, back when you were growing up? It was, that's a funny story because... Uh, it all started with uh, Three Dog Night. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I think we grew up around the same time. So, yeah. yeah. I saw them on television. I was just a little kid. and I remember I saw them on television. I was totally fascinated by how people could get together on a stage with instruments and make those kinds of sounds. And that's where it started. And then I started getting into the Jackson 5, the Osmonds, you know, all that stuff. And um, my mom saw my interest, so immediately uh, she started investing in equipment for me at a very young age. I think I was about maybe seven, eight years old. Okay. And and I started on drums, actually. Oh, that was your first instrument, yeah. Yep. Do you still play the drums at all today? Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I love the drums. Yeah. And uh, how about yourself listen to music uh, around town um, wh- what are you listening to today Besides- I, mean, I basically listen to a variety of music I mean I'm not not really set in any particular style I mean I'll be driving down the street and you know I'll be listening to some opera some <laughs> right symphony music I mean you name it and uh, you'll catch me listening to it I used to get into Clint Black <laughs> it's a I, shock. I, I, didn't, I didn't find the Clint Black uh, the cover version on, on one of the CD, but yeah. How, how's the radio response out your way, KMOJ? Uh, they they feeling it yet? They feeling it. Yeah, that's, that's great. We getting we getting some love all over the country. I mean, right. Um, especially the southeast. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Texas, all the way from Texas to you know South Carolina. I mean, they're just feeling it. So I think we had. Some like uh, 12, 13 add-ons last I, I looked. Wow. So, yeah, we're looking for a lot of, you know, a lot of requests. Mm-hmm. Being an independent, you need those request lines opened up. And you need a lot of people calling them, requesting, and that, that helps generate it too, generate the buzz. And for people, if they just tuned in, if they're listening to the car down down at the parks here in, in Bridgeport, mm-hmm. and they're saying uh, they, they just dropped in in the Brown Mark interview, uh, I will be featuring... The Brown Mark Music and Interview Weekend this upcoming weekend, and it'll start Friday into Monday on the other internet station I operate. So you can send me an email at eastwestdj at aol dot com, and uh, they get all the information with the link. And uh, thanks to the Prince dot org for uh, posting the press release up there. And I know we got a lot of people in the chat room there. Brown Mark checking checking out the interview. Oh, good, good. Yeah. So uh, Cryptic, uh, that, that's the name of your band you're going with, right? Yeah, that's yeah, it. Cryptic, and, and uh, this fall should be really busy with you. Oh, yeah. Starting out in the Twin Cities. Oh, yeah, get ready, because yeah. it's going to be a whole different kind of flavor coming out of here. How, how about when you, you have a band um, playing bass and singing lead? Is, it, is that more challenging than any other instrument to sing lead and do a show? Yeah, because it's the backbone, you know. Um, that's why I have two bass players, me and Jerry. Okay. And I always wanted to do that, and it is so funky. I mean, it's just funky. That's all I can say. Right. 
<laughs> I'm all for that. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, when we start just going off on a tantrum, we get in these grooves, it's just sick. So we can't wait to take it to the stage. It's going to be a lot of fun. You know, we we both come from a party arena, so that's that's what we're going to bring to the stage. So uh, anybody that comes out, if, look out. Yeah, if you don't like partying, just stay home, you know, because it's going to be a party. And uh, there's going to be uh, hopefully some previews online, and you'll have uh, tour information at crypticmusic.com. And most importantly, get this CD in your home, and uh, it'll ship very, very soon. Brown Mark and Cryptic at crypticmusic.com, and there's all sorts of ordering options there. And uh, i got to thank you, Mark, for uh, stopping by the Upper Room Show, Kelly. Hey, no problem. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah, and when you come over here, it's not as cold as Minnesota, so <laughs> you you can stop by the studios and once you're in the New York City, Connecticut area. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it'd be great. Definitely. Hey, I'm going to go with uh, the first single, I guess, off the album. Is, it's on tonight, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and uh, we're going to get into that right now, and then we'll follow that up with uh, I Don't Know You Like I Should, and uh, we'll be playing more Brown Mark music throughout uh, the next next while and, and give you a real nice feel from brown mark featuring yeah. cryptic yeah it's been a while so thanks mark all right thank you okay peace